Hello everyone. As always, a huge, huge thank you to my Patreons and my mods who are helping me to be able to do more things like this, create longer, more engaging content on here and on mainly other places, if you know what I mean. Those longer, more, uh, I, I, how do I say, just places where I can put up longer content, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so cool. Uh, let me see if... Emily is already online because that's who I will be joining in just a minute or so. Hello, everybody who's joining. Hello, ma'am. Thanks for being here. That's weird. It like shows up quick invites. Does that mean that I can invite anybody who's live? At the That's terrifying to me. No, thank you. <laughs> Hello from the UK. A thought about me. Thank you. Well, here I am. <laughs> cool, cool. Hello, Capricorn. Hello, Wisconsin. Where it's actually uh, autumn out there now, I guess. <laughs> here it's still, I don't know, there's a cold front coming in, so we'll see. Um, Hi, from Sweden. Hello. Um, I've been all right. Dude, energy is like funny today with like the full moon and everything. So I'm just, that's why I'm in my tent. <laughs> From New Hampshire, hello. Good afternoon, Draco. From Iceland, hello. Oh my goodness, we got folks from all over the place today. Very cool. Let's see if, let's see if Emily is on yet. I don't see, I'm, I'm just gonna, oh, hello from London, hello. Okay, so I'm just gonna say, I'm on. Let's see what happens. So, hello, the wolf pack. <laughs> From Yellowknife, hello. System is freezing. Hmm. It says I have good signal from here, but also, who knows? <laughs> oh, you used to live in Wilmy. Hey, cool, cool. Hello, Wyoming, upstate New York. Hello. Lurking. Hey, that's fine. Lurkers are welcome here. Hey, there. Hello. Cool. <laughs> Oh, I need to turn up the volume. Oh my goodness. I was like secret I watching. Can't really... Yeah. <laughs> like I can't hear you. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can. It's kind of quiet, but not too bad. Okay. This is when, you know, in consults, I make the joke about being like, you know, spiritual communication isn't so different from like this kind of communication when we're like, do we have a connection? Is it the stable connection? Are we connected to the one that we need to be connected to? Okay, great. <laughs> right? No, very, very similar. Very, very similar. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's a nice metaphor I use all the time, you know, with different folks being like, okay, well, they're not like here, here, but we're going to do a telephone and we're going to like call them. We're going to use your connection and then kind of do like a third way call. But it's you talking to them. I'm just sort of here. So. Right. Also, uh, welcome to my tent. The vibes are so weird today. I was like, I want to be in my tent if I'm going to go live. The vibes are so weird today. So weird today. It's so odd. Like, I love your tent. By the way, that's super cool. I'm a um, who works from a tent. I'm proud. Hey, <laughs> that is life goals, actually. I think that you do that very well. Good job. <laughs> um, but honestly, the vibes are so weird. Honestly, it's, I think it's the moon. Mm -hmm. I think it's the moon. Um, because this, this full moon is super, like, this is the full moon that turns people into werewolves. You know what I mean? Like, that's the vibes of this full moon of, like, it's the type that you would write a spooky story under because it inspires you to do so. And that's not super great for everyone in collective all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's interesting because it's one of those things where like, I, I do enjoy acknowledging moon phases because it's like a reminder for me, like when to clean my house is a part of the reminder. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but like in looking into releasing and that sort of thing it's always good but like it's so weird like last week it i was so tired and i know you mentioned in your um weekly outlooks like how this week it's more like getting more creative and doing more things and like last week was more like this. yes <laughs> and the words right now it's just more like foggy <laughs> yep yeah, it feels like the last two weeks, it was like two weeks ago, it was fog. And then last week, it was like, our brains got scattered. And then now this week, it's finally like, hey, 
would you like to see the world again? Like, let's peek our heads out a little bit, um, which is um, nice. But now we're kind of recuperating. Yeah, um, I actually just did because um, I'll be traveling next week, um, which all fun for me. The more things that line up with that, I'm like, great. <laughs> Glad I work with Hermes because that's going to come in handy. <laughs> But um, I do a monthly read for my Patreons and I usually split it up between like four and five polls for like the monthly outlook, basically. Mm -hmm. And I did that this morning and Patreons, you're going to see it on the first. Like the the month is like this. It's like, there's yeah. going to be this. And then it's going to be like, Bleh. and then it's like this again. And then Bleh. and I was just like, this is a lot. <laughs> Yeah, October's going to be super activated. I've been looking at it, too, because it's very, like, I love Libra and Scorpio season. So, like, I'm like, ooh, this feels nice. Like, I'm so excited for it. But truly and realistically, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting. I think a lot of people are going to get clarity. I think a lot of people are going to get shoved in directions that they need to go, which doesn't always mean what they want to have happen. Um, but I'm here for it. I think that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> and of course I'm here for it until I get shown somewhere and they're like, no, I'm the same thing. But it definitely has that sort of energy of like pushing people in the way that they need to go in the directions that they need to go. Um, so it's going to be very intriguing to see how that shows up because it's very up and down and roundabout. Yeah. Um, I just had a thought, but real quick, I'll tell you, you're getting compliments on my side on your new office. Just thought you should know. <laughs> Thank you. Is this fun? Yes. Oh, I love I'm the so, so <laughs> Um, I actually, talking about reads is a little bit of a segue of what we talked about, because I'll tell you, um, granted, when I check in with Patreon energy, it's mainly that, but if more people can get more from that, and this is why I bring this mm -hmm. up, for around um, like Halloween proper, I did like another poll just to kind of see what was going on. I pulled the stone. It's a pumice stone that I got from mm. a river that runs from Mount Rainier. And the advice that I gave was be wary of what you absorb and whatever you absorb, make sure you're in control of what it is you absorb. And I think that's a great segue for what we're going to talk about with spiritual ethics. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Rebecca and I wanted to hop on and talk about this a little bit because, well, first of all, more and more people are waking up, which mm -hmm. we've seen for the last like three years, realistically, but truly that is happening quicker and quicker and quicker now, um, which is great. Love mm -hmm. it. Want more people to wake up. The problem is, is with a bunch of people waking up really quickly, a lot of ethical things, a lot of morality things, a lot of like hey, what do you actually do with these abilities in a way that's better for humanity and doesn't harm you or harm someone else is kind of getting shoved to the side. And both of us have had recent experiences with that. And so we wanted to make it, uh, we wanted to chat about it. We wanted to talk more significantly. Um, and we both will post this to our YouTube too, so you can watch it after the fact. If those of you who are afraid of missing, a couple of people will be like, I can't stay the whole time. It's fine. Yeah, You can watch yeah. for us later. Um, yeah. You know, um, something just came to mind and then I want to ask a, a broader question of like what mm -hmm. we think about when hearing the words like spiritual ethics. Um, mm -hmm. I recorded a course, this is also for my Patreons, um, last night with Rebecca, who I've gone live with, her um, handle is Bruja Bones. And one of the things that she said that was really striking to me that I love, because we talk a lot about mental health with spiritual health, health but um, she mentioned and I'm certainly paraphrasing here, but like mm -hmm. if your spiritual journey is aligned with you and is helping you, it should energize you. If it is exhausting you, that's usually a checkpoint of like, look back at your life. Is there something that you need to check with your own shadow work, your own mental health, maybe your own physical health. And that's something that I've noticed with some people opening up as well. It's like they get yeah. so into the spirit that they forget they need to like, feed themselves and like drink water, go to the bathroom, rest, and also live mm -hmm. in the physical. I think that's perfectly divine timed with exactly what we're talking about. And I couldn't agree more, especially considering that a lot of the problems that I find with the new age movement is a bypassing of physicality, either in like a physical taking care of your body sense or a uh, love and light you don't actually need to feel anything else you can just bypass it this way you can just shove glitter at everybody and it'll be totally fine which is not how it works on earth no <laughs> um, 
the slightest. <laughs> so on the very least, like needing to tune into the physical space there, but like the holisticness that is having an earth experience, not bypassing any of that either mm-hmm. in favor of sparkles which are fun like it's the spiritual stuff that's the fun part right and a lot of people i mean you you know this and we've talked about this extensively before where people will be like oh wow like i started my spiritual awakening and all of a sudden i had to heal everything like all of the stuff came up and that's how it works you you have to do it at the same time usually when you start your spiritual awakening it'll be like a magic thing or two will happen and then it's like and eh, now we heal all the other stuff which is good. That's how we clear out the energy of our magical rivers. That's how we get better at spiritual stuff. But if you bypass that, then your spirituality stuff is going to start burning you out really quickly because you don't have space for it. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to keep feeling fun or magical or exciting or any of that. Yep. Or if the connection starts to get harder, this is actually a video I watched from her recently where it's like, if spirit's kind of pulling away, it could also be an indicator of look back at yourself to see if they're if whatever may be pulling away in the event that you need to focus or refocus on your own work rather than being like, woo, all this stuff out here when we're here first, (laughs) we're here for this reason first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's important to think of it too. It's like our body is a separate consciousness than our, our spiritual selves, right? Like our, our actual soul selves and our body are two different beings and we're trying to get them to agree. And you can't do the spiritual stuff unless you're kind of working with the body at the same time, because that's allowing you to take up space here. And if you can't take up space here, then what are you going to do? Like, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, just keeping that. Anchor. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I do want to say that someone said, and, and I, I just want to touch on this because it popped in. My biggest challenging challenge is balancing the spiritual with the tangible. Someone said that. And I do just want to say balance looks different for everybody because mm-hmm. I get a lot of people that are like, I'm supposed to do, you know, have everything in equal measure. And that's not actually personally balance for them. That's maybe the idea of balance of like, if you had a scale and both sides need to be equal, but honestly, balance is you being able to handle what you can handle on in an intuitive sense. So, and that goes for physical or spiritual stuff. Like intuitively, if you're like, yes, Awesome. I love today feels so good for spiritual stuff, but tomorrow I feel really like I should just focus on body things. But then I do that for maybe a week and then I come back and I have another really spiritual day that could look like balance for you. And I don't want anyone to be like, Oh, I'm so out of balance because I don't consistently practice spirituality every single day, or I don't consistently, you know, there's some days where I feel more attuned and less attuned. That's just ebb and flow, which is its own type of like natural balance. So I just don't want that to develop into anyone's like issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. And kind of on that as well and this kind of goes into ethics i guess we're going into the ethics of the individual first which i love (laughs) how Mm -hmm. you treat yourself um another part of that is with so many people waking up and i know you talked about this on your channel as well some folks will get the idea that what they are experiencing is right for everybody Mm -hmm. and maybe their belief is right for everybody or they should be doing that or who they work with everybody should Mm -hmm. be working with um that always is huge red flaggy for me because i'm very much about we need to be individuals thinker like individual thinkers first so that when we actually align with other people who think like us it's genuine it's validating and it's not following Mm. blindly what somebody else is saying especially if that feels wrong to us it's first once again the ethics the connecting with one's own first before just being like oh do i have to work with that person oh do i have to be this thing if you want yeah (laughs) yeah i totally agree and i also think it's some like internalized christianity stuff there too of like we all have to align in order for something to be true. And that's not factual. There's a 10 million truths. It's funny if anyone has ever seen any of my like channeled history videos on anything, people get on there and they get all up in arms trying to correct me on history, which is objectively personal narrative. Like that is <laughs> truly how it works. And that's how spirituality is too, is it's truly a individualized personal search for truth instead of a collective search for truth and then if you find people that align then again like you said it's so validating Mm -hmm. um because it is it's a natural way of validating each other and like getting that expansion but that is what spirituality is all about is instead of being like everyone needs to do it this way which i think i know you do a beautiful job of this and i i try to do i focus a lot on that of like 
validating a spiritual thing and having it be personal and having it be, um, hey, you can try it like this or you can try it like this or you can create it your own way. Like this is just a pathway instead of being like, these are the rules, Mm -hmm. which is Mm -hmm. also a big red flag for me. Anyone, anytime someone's coming into the spiritual space and being like, these are the rules, this is how you have to do something. This is like, if you're going to do this, you have to do X, Y, and Z thing first. You don't have to do anything. There's suggestions that we would make like, hey, maybe make sure your energy is cleared, ground, and shielded before you go poke some spirits. Or if you're going to astral travel, have a guide. Those types of things. But if you choose not to do them, that's I'm not going to tell you you did it wrong. Yep, you'll learn. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe you don't need that. You know, um, yeah. it's kind of like I when people talk about or they ask me about my my practices with deities, working with them, worship, etc. Um, mm-hmm. I do put out Instagram posts on, uh, it's turning into like a, <laughs> it's turning into a weekly post for Hermes where he gets fruit wine and some kind of cake. Though what was funny was just recently the other night, he was like, you know, all this regularity is really just not my jam. You know, people might see it and it won't hit the same way. So I'm like, okay, got it, got it, got it. Which is so <laughs> on par with him. All the same, when people ask me questions like, oh, how to work with a deity, et cetera. Um, I always point them towards the deity reader who's on my team because that's her jam. Like she works with Mm -hmm. the individual with the deity that is reaching out or they're trying to reach out to kind of as an intermediary Mm -hmm. to create a personal process. And yeah, yeah, like I, once again, it's like what might be right for me, you know, posting photos for Hermes with cake on the altar. That's, I, I wouldn't say everybody has to do that. And certainly that's not what every deity wants. And so far mm-hmm. also, also Hermes is starting to be like, maybe a bit much, maybe chill out, make it more, you know, exciting, not every week, you know, calm down. I was just like, God, it. I just, we all enjoy cake together. So. <laughs> You're like, but I want the cake. Like- yeah. <laughs> He always gets the first piece. We always like cut out the large, you know, however large he wants and put it on the altar and that kind of thing. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's been it's been a fun thing. <laughs> well, that's another thing to keep as far as ethics goes. Um, spirits as in ghosts, deities, fae, nature entities, whoever the heck you're talking to out there, they're whole ass beings. <laughs> and I always want to like we're really humans love to put things in boxes and like subscribe things to archetypes and do all these things. And then we forget that they have like their own opinions and thoughts. And like they, if you reach out specifically speaking to deity work, not so much with guides because they already have a contract with you. They're working for your best intention, but deity works. If you're like, I really want to work with this deity and you reach out, they might reject you. They might be like, no, (laughs) you don't get to work with me. Or they'll be like, sure. But if you're going to, if we're going to work together, I require these things from you and you can choose whether or not you're aligned with those things. Because again, they're a whole being currently Hermes and I have continued fighting because I can't find his stupid hamster. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, why you're fighting right now. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Background, just brief background. Um, I didn't really work with Hermes at all. I still technically don't. We just fight with each other. Um, but I got a hamster that was like a wormy and I'm like, oh, this is going to be grounding. I'm going to like hold on to my wormy hamster every time I do like readings or whatever. And I was like, oh, what should I name it? Because I name everything. Everything is a name. And immediately Apollo comes in and goes, hmm, Hermes. And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, no. I got to now how I have to name it Hermes now because like every time I look at it, that's all I'm going to think. So I named it Hermes and that pissed Hermes off. And then we proceeded to get in like a fight with each other. And then we kind of made like, and I mean, like he would do something to mess up something for me, very outside of Mercury retrograde, just like messing with technology or messing with travel. And I'd be like, dude. So then I would have to do something that like messed with him. And like, anyway, we made up. However, since the move, I can't find the fucking hamster. I don't know where it is. And he's really, I tried to tune into him during Mercury retrograde. I was like, hey, could you tell me about this? And he's like, no. And I was like, why? And he's like, you don't know where the hamster is. I'm not talking to you until you find my hamster. And I was like, one, you hated it. And now you love it? Like, this is not fair. <laughs> and I don't know where it is. So. <laughs> um, good luck with that. I know. Uh, I know. Krista, Krista was like, I think I might pull a horror read, like a chart to see where the hamster is. And I was like, I think he's going to mess with it. Because I don't think he's going to let you do that. And <laughs> no, like, inconclusive. So. When I find the hamster, Hermes and I will talk again. But until then, every time I've tuned in, he's been like, no, no, no. <laughs> wow. It's like, I almost feel like 
and maybe this is looking too far, but it's almost like, no, we don't need to talk until you find the hamster. And the hamster is just not going to show up until we need to talk. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I like it. It's comforting. It's like definitely a grounding tool for me. But <laughs> I gave it to my like I gave the hamster to blink to my daughter who was helping us like move. And she was like she came over with me early to the house when we were moving out of it. And I was like, here, you cuddle those things. So it wasn't with the rest of my office stuff. It got separated. And I don't know where she put it. <laughs> so here we are. Love that. Like I hate it, but I love it. It's just, it just, it's, it's on par. It's just, yeah. So when you were like, yeah, he doesn't like consistency. I'm like, oh, you don't say. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll just take this. You know, I won't make a Hermes post on Wednesday, so that's fine. Or if I make a post, it'll be me being like, I worked out because I had to run to an airport terminal. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. You're not running. It's gonna be leisurely. It'll be lovely. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, you know, I, I could go on to stories about Hermes. You know, maybe that's another live we do where we're just like right. interactions with gods that made us go, huh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a stuffy. It's not a live hamster. Thank God I didn't lose a live <laughs> hamster. So we're just like, no, no, it's a stuffy. It's like one of those warmy stuffies that you can like microwave to make it like warm and toasty. So I use it as like a grounding tool yeah. when I'm like feeling disconnected. Um, well, not presently. I don't use it as a grounding tool. <laughs> I use it as a, I don't know, it's gone. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I love somebody's like legitimately concerned, like, there is a loose hamster in your house. <laughs> right. Okay. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, it's not, that's not super off brand for my house, but still. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I love okay, where this went. So, yeah. We should go back. <laughs> circling back around to uh let's talk some more ethical stuff Mm -hmm. the other thing and this has come up a bunch of different times throughout my career as a psychic throughout my personal practice as a psychic which i always i use that word because it's the most accepted like people understand it the most but it's not some a word that i'm married to i think that the what i do is not necessarily identified by a word so just kind of keep that in mind if the word like psychic comes up and you're like oh you see the future like that is also very minimum so the Starting there, I think with ethics too, like figuring out what, if you're going to someone who is a psychic, figuring out what they actually specialize in and do before assuming that they can do what you want because you want it is super duper important. So like branching from the individual outwards just slightly, if you're looking for guidance, that's something to keep in mind because not every psychic does the same thing, not every spiritualist does the same thing, not every medium does the same thing, nor do they do it in the same way. And that's why everyone has their own spiritual gifts as well is you can totally develop and become a psychic on your own. Absolutely, everybody has that, but it's very different because it's your type. Mm -hmm. And kind of jumping off of that as well, I, I feel like I'm reclaiming what mediumship and what being a medium is because Mm -hmm. in my understanding, it's not just past loved ones. And people oftentimes think medium past Mm -hmm. loved ones, past loved ones is a kind of frequency, just like Mm -hmm. ghosts and uh, otherworldly stuff. Um, Aliens, depending on your kind of understanding of that can be like that deity spirit guides, higher collectives. Um, all of these are different frequencies. Mediumship is connecting with those and acting as an intermediary in order to connect people to where they need to go. And one of the things Mm -hmm. that I focus on, and I have all this verbiage on my site too, which is another thing too, when anybody is booking, I want to have all the answers as possible up front. They don't have to read all of it, but I want them to know what they're getting when they book, because I, one, I don't want to disappoint anybody, you know, especially if it's like right there. But two, mm-hmm. I want people to get what they're looking for. I, I want people to be paired with the best that's for them. I, I don't believe in this concept of there is a medium or a psychic or a sensitive that is the best. Well, what does that mean? I think yeah. it's more about the vibe that you get with somebody, how you connect with somebody. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm for that too. It's important. And this is when I say to you, I've made videos about this, reader bias matters. Yeah. If they put their blinders on, or I don't want to call mm-hmm. them blinders because it's not necessarily that, but like if they put their cultural understanding or their religious understanding or um, their personal experience, I mean, all of that is bias. All We all have that. Mm-hmm. Though um, 
if you go to somebody who's very strict on they read like this because it's within their practice within their, within their specific religion and let's say they're not open to ghosts or let's say they're not open to otherworldly creatures they may be amazing about like reading angels or mm -hmm. um talking to past loved ones but you yeah. gotta be specific because some of those folks even though they're incredible at doing those things if you say oh yeah there's a ghost in my house some of those folks may be like oh well ghosts don't exist yep yep and that it's that's why it's important from like a personal even when i go to get readings from people which I do still, and I know you do still, it's because other people do things that I don't do in a different way than I do it and all those sorts of things. Um, and sometimes my guides are like, hey, you have to go get a reading from this person. We're not talking to you until you do, which does happen, by the way, also sometimes. Um, but it's important to think about those things. Be like, oh, okay, like, what am I looking for out of this interaction with this intuitive person? And with that and what am I open, like, what direction am I open to it going as well? So always come in with an open mind. And if there's something specific you're looking for them to tune into, that's awesome. But if there is a specific thing that you want from the conversation, for example, like something that's unhealthy attachment, like speaking on a mediumship level, um, I won't open up my mediumship room to talk to past loved ones unless it's requested, because I don't feel like it's aligned for me to be like, let me just throw open this door. So anyone who you've ever interacted with has passed can just come on on in because that's not how I roll because that feels unethical to me because if you don't want to talk to like your racist uncle that always made you feel uncomfortable I'm not letting him into your space mm -hmm. however if you're like I want to talk to this past loved one because they need to tell me this one code word in order for me to believe something like that that is not super a super ethical way to interact with the spiritual world just because they again are whole and complete beings so is the reader and you were searching for that specific thing is setting yourself up for an unhealthy attachment to results when you could be like, I just want to know what comes up from this way. You're probably gonna get a lot more out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. I could, I could go on and on about um, no. ethics in, especially talking to past loved ones, um, the ethics from their perspective too. Um, mm -hmm. And how that works. I've, I've made some lives already. If, if folks are interested in checking those out, um, Catherine's yeah. one of the people that I went live with on that subject because they're primarily the um, past loved one reader on my readers team. Mm -hmm. And we talked a lot about really what it comes down to is keeping oneself in check to be prepared for anything. But that's also any reading in general. Like mm -hmm. at some point, you either believe or you don't. Like I've seen some skeptics get incredible things from folks, stuff that mm -hmm. they truly, like the reader could not have known, like dates, times, like incredible stuff. And they still are like, yeah, but so what it comes down to is you're either gonna yeah. believe or you're not. And it's not that you have to believe, that's fine. No. <laughs> you don't have to at all. Like no. your journey, that's the other thing, if anyone, if you ever see someone, and this is something, you know, on being a psychic, if you yourself notice yourself doing this, or you see someone doing this, that is so much like, this is the truth, and I need to force you to believe in these things, or I need to prove to you that I'm good at this, that's not really healthy. I'm not going to say necessarily it's super unethical, but it's just really unhealthy for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, because truthfully, that's what it is, is it's not your, it's, Whenever I talk about this, and I just did this with my mentorship group, um, where I'm, I'm mentoring them to help them be better psychics, um, and I just we just did a lesson on ethics and how to deal with people who don't believe you and how to tell people about if you're psychic, those kinds of things. Um, it, it's not really up to you. If they don't believe in you, you can be like, wow, wonderful. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your journey. Or if they're mean about it, just be like, well, I hope you enjoy being boring by yourself. Like, I'm going to sit over here in magic. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, it's Fine. it's one of those things like there's so much out there and so long as you don't get lost in it, like it can mm -hmm. be fascinating. It, it's it's mm -hmm. so much inspiration out there. So many connections you can make with somebody that go so far beyond just like enjoying somebody's company where you can look at things and be like, whoa, we knew each other from X amount of lives or like we had this connection or we've figured out why we know each other in this life on a cosmic scale, but right now we just enjoy each other's company. Um, yeah. And that's the thing for some people, they're fine just enjoying another human being and being like, Oh, they're my friend. And that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That That's the point. That's if we can get that at the beginning at base, 
beautiful. <laughs> if we want to do everything else, great, but nobody has to believe in that. That's If that's not on their path, there's nothing we can do to change their mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I fully agree with that. And so now moving, so we talked about like personal stuff and then we talked about if you're getting a reading. Now, if you're doing a reading or if you're someone who's intuitive, um, again, it's your own moral code and the universe doesn't operate off of our individualized ideas of morality, which I have gotten slapped with many a time in my journey of doing this since forever, since high school, mm -hmm. basically. Um, but I will say things like the Long Island Medium, for example, where she will approach random people in public and ask them to, you know, like not even ask them, just be like, I'm tuning in and seeing this person. Do you know that that personally feels incredibly unethical because that is not considering their consent or their journey, which is why both of us will talk so often on how important consent is in spirituality in general. It's so essential. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's too bad that like, mass media has examples like that because mm -hmm. it also puts this expectation on people who are more are becoming more aware of their uh psychic sense psychic sensibilities yeah that works um <laughs> psychic sensibilities like it puts this expectation of like we're supposed to serve society if we can we should and we can't just go to the grocery store and you know buy some eggs or something we've got to you know be open to whatever universe gives us that's exhausting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's also something that makes people want to shut down their stuff too i have i've had this questions more times than i can count with they'll be like hey i'm starting to feel these things i'm starting to hear my guides do I have to do this to tune in for everybody else? How do I make a spiritual business out of it? I don't really want to. And I'm like, whoa, pump the brakes. You don't have to. This can be personal. You are not required to share this with everyone. And if you want to go to the store and not hear other people's, you know, ghosts that are attached to them, just turn, you can turn it off. And that doesn't mean you're failing or doing a disservice. Um, just, just flip that switch. You're allowed to shut down and disconnect as well because it's you don't have to be in this service role which is really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect example of using psychic stuff just because I was walking around downtown a few months ago and I wanted fries. And there are many places downtown that have fries, but I used my psychic ability to find the best fries for me that night. And I, it was like having a, a cord being pulled here. It was my, it was using a, a clairsentience essentially. And I not only found some of the best fries I've had from a surprising restaurant that I had no interest in going to back, but I went back. It was great. I also found pimento cheese with said fries and they were delicious. So be psychic, find fries. <laughs> be psychic and find fries. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's totally how it works. Like that's fair. Do it that way. Like I will sit there at like lunch and decide what I need to have off the menu psychically because that's, fun or I'll go to the store if there's something I really want to buy and I'm like oh I really want to buy it I will actually see like does this feel good like do I actually want to buy it or is this just like is this in my eyes to mess and you can totally tune that and you can ignore that too you can get psychic things and be like now nah, I'm gonna buy it anyway I've done it many a time but you can <laughs> you absolutely can yep yep so yeah for anybody yeah. who's opening up to this start with everyday stuff you yeah. know it like start with trusting yourself on everyday stuff I I oftentimes say g growing intuition growing clear cognizance and just like knowing and feeling and that kind of thing like mm -hmm. that's how you grow with spirit stuff too but you've got to be able yeah. to be the channel for yourself first <laughs> to understand mm -hmm. more it's yeah it's super duper important um and i also just want to say on spiritual consent level too obviously it's super important to get to consent from the person you want to work on or talk to their loved ones for or whatever especially if you're doing energy healing um it's always really unaligned whenever i scroll through this and someone's all of a sudden doing an energy healing here healing video on here without any preface or anything they're just like wham here's the healing hand of reiki and i'm always like ah ah, ah no <laughs> We did, I didn't consent to this. I don't know who you are. Why would you do this? Um, so that's important. But also for like, if you're going to talk to ghosts or if you're going to talk to deities or anything, like it's important to get their consent too, or even like pets, like animal communication, like if, whether you're getting consent from them directly or like higher self wise, um, that's also 
important because there's a difference between having a lovely like friendship with ghost spirits and entities um, that you've really worked on and developed mm -hmm. so they trust you and forcing them to trust you for you to get benefit from their existence like there's a huge difference there look at your giddy face <laughs> You went right to the topic that I was like, I'm ready to go. I know. I know I did. I was like, oh, I'm getting so good. Up. Let's go, Rebecca. Let's go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start uh, a recent video. I think I posted it yesterday where it's like a check-in mm -hmm. with Molly the ghost. Molly, who, um, since everything has happened and since she is a ghost, have figured out like why she was sticking around and has since chosen to become more and found like a fuller part of her soul. And it's very exciting what mm -hmm. she's doing. She She's essentially like a spy. It's like really badass. Like, I don't get to check in with her as often as I used to, but wow, when I do, I'm always just like, please, yes, tell me more. Um, mm -hmm. That's a whole other story that is not even mine to tell. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> but something she said the other day that really struck me, and it's in the video where she said, um, the time of ghosts being kept in single spaces be done. Mm -hmm. And that really struck me because I, I've come across so many ghosts who are stuck. And mm -hmm. part of what I do as I mean, I can say psychopomp stuff, or I could just say, as a person trying to do the right thing, when I talk to ghosts who are stuck, I, I oftentimes I'm like, hey, do you know how you got here? Do you want to go somewhere? And like, did, did, did your feet just get really heavy one day? Like, can we just, you know, move on a little bit? Um, I, I try to do the best that I can mm -hmm. for spirits, though a mm -hmm. huge red flag for me is when spirits tell me they can't leave because of xyz living person mm -hmm. uh i take huge issue with that and i also take huge issue with waiting on things so mm -hmm. uh if a spiritual practitioner or um in a recent case that i have a, a paranormal investigator is like oh we're gonna move you on later we're gonna do this in x amount of months later, later, mm -hmm. later, it turns into the, oh yeah, pay me money so I can show off my ghost. And mm -hmm. then maybe we move you on. As a spiritual practitioner, I have huge ethical issues with that, especially yeah. as somebody who can do something about it and with mm -hmm. immediacy. And it doesn't even take that much effort. It's not like lighting a bunch of candles and having to do the seance and calling in the stuff. No, it's just being like, hey, would you like a choice? Would you like mm -hmm. to not be here? Yeah. So, yeah, the time of ghosts being in one place be done. A lot of, of a lot of ghosts are going to be much more obvious the way that the veil is getting thinner and moving away. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of ghosts are going to be there where they were not there before. There are essentially shades that are kind of popping up all over the place. Yeah, someone just commented, ghosts be ghosting today. And I'm like, yeah, ghosts be ghosting like since July. <laughs> since july yeah uh -huh. um, <laughs> they have been like very significantly since about that time yeah uh that matches up too with my timeline yes uh <laughs> <laughs> and i think too the more spiritual energy that we put out um the more kinds of ghosts are likely to show up um mm -hmm. i know outside of the apartment some of them we've had to do different kinds of wards to be like cover up the light so we don't look like a big lighthouse um, cause we're doing a lot of spiritual stuff in here just for our own practices and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Over time though, the courtyard, uh, started to kind of fill up with some folks and not all of them were like, where am I? How'd I get here? Some of them were like, yeah, I'm from uh, two blocks down. I hear Rebecca lives here. Yeah. I, I saw what she did at my place that one time I, I thought I'd come check out hers. And I'm like, I'm just trying to get, no, <laughs> like, no you can't do that, sir. Leave me alone. <laughs> And that's the thing, they never got in, like the words are very clear mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And we've figured out that and we've moved past it. But um, no, I just, I have such huge issues with ghosts having to feel like they have to be stuck. It's one thing if they yeah. want to be, and then it turns into like, how do we work with them in order to share space without it being bad for everybody. Mm -hmm. But like, I just have this huge issue 
where people get into this whole, oh, I can't see them dance monkey dance. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, right, like <laughs> I get it. Um, I fully agree. And so people are like, people do that. Yeah, unfortunately, people do do that. Like, look at any episodes of the show Ghost Hunters. There you go. That's Most people doing paranormal that. paranormal investigation mm -hmm. TV shows are like that. They're like, can you put your hand on your head? And the ghost is like, I'm in pain. Can I leave? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or even just being like, good, you go away. Like, no, I'm not going to do that for you. And then they're like, oh, the ghost is mad. Well, yeah, you just told the ghost they were stupid and to dance. Like, they're not going to do that. Um, and it's, it, it also being said, if you interact with the ghost or you come in contact with the ghost, you don't have to let them like leave. It's just don't apply attachments. Like if you don't know what to do to do that, like you don't have to, but just keep in mind that you, they also aren't like something to be possessed. Like you don't get to own them and their space. Um, that also goes with like your personal deity practice too. Like you're, you get to own your practice, but you don't get to own the deity. Like you don't get to like keep the deity, I guess, in a way. I don't want to talk about that in like a cultural appropriation thing because that's another thing that's very ethically not cool. But if you're like, no, you can't work with Hecate unless you do these five things. Well, maybe Hecate has you doing those five things, but like other people might not be the case. And it's very similar. Very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, they're whole people. So uh, they can also lie to you. They can tell you stories. Like if they're not your guide, like you can yeah. have a whole bunch of stuff, which is why we always talk about like practice spiritual hygiene and be safe and those types of things. Again, not rules, but mm -hmm. recommendations yeah. from doing this at the same time. <laughs> For sure. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's something else too, with those who are spiritually sensitive, sometimes with ghosts, the answers can come back very spotty because mm -hmm. essentially they're, they're pieces of themselves it's not always mm -hmm. like they're like the full soul of somebody who lived and passed and is like there sometimes yeah. it may be for that particular life but sometimes it is like a piece sometimes those pieces don't have all the memory that we might all the same that doesn't mean to treat them poorly it's just like mm -hmm. a oh right it's it's tuesday they're like it's tuesday it's like yeah you know like it's it's a matter mm -hmm. of patience. I just, goodness, I get so passionate about this. I guess I'm just like so much right now because I'm just like, they're, they're people. It doesn't matter if they don't remember everything. It doesn't matter if they're not there all the time. It doesn't matter if they forgot their name. Like, mm -hmm. why can't we just treat them nicely? And in doing that, offering them basic humanity, yeah. they may move on on their own because they may be like, oh, I was treated like a person. And mm -hmm. I forgot why I was here in the first place. So I'm just going to go. Ghosts mm -hmm. can do that on their own. We don't have to run in and be their saviors all the time. No. Like, that's another issue I have. Move them to the light. Do you know what the light is? Like, people are like, oh, the light, the light, the, and then they put their bias on it. I'm like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Open a window and let them choose where that window is going to go. Like, that kind of energy. Mm hmm <laughs> no 100 percent. and it's funny too because you'll be surprised what ghosts want ghosts want to do like once you if you tune in more like i met a ghost very recently when we were in ireland and it just kept getting blown off of a tower falling down and then walking back up the stairs and then getting blown off of a tower and falling down and i was like hey like you good do you do you want to stop no i'm doing what i want i'm like <laughs> enjoy <laughs> like, <laughs> no like some folks are fine they're just they'll do that and it's just like uh well you're not hurting anybody and you can't be hurt like that anymore yeah. so um you keep okay. falling off that tower <laughs> <sighs> all right then rock on <laughs> yeah that's uh, funny goodness mm -hmm. i think it was jimothy we went to the battleship for his birthday a few years ago which also he doesn't care about his birthday it was just you know <laughs> was something to do um he thought it'd be fun to jump off of uh he climbed a sun, I don't know what it was, I don't know battleship terminology, but he climbed up somewhere really high and he thought it'd be fun to jump off. And I was just like, people would be so confused to see a Civil War era spirit jumping off of a World War II battleship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. He didn't I hurt hope he made a big cannonball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just like, this is the stuff that I, I'm creative, but I couldn't make up. 
out, right? <sighs> yeah. Um, you know, oh. uh, another thing I'll say uh, is with more ghosts being more present for those in the paranormal investigation field, it is mm -hmm. likely with the tech advancing and with the spiritual energy advancing, we are going to get more spirits showing up on technology, which mm -hmm. is super exciting. Like, ah, like what a, what a cool time to be alive where we can right. actually have that validation. Um, all the same, it's important to not get so excited that we forget that that's a human being or mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be a human being. It can be something else, but like, that's a, it's a, being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I fully agree. And I love the fact that technology can give us that validation now. And it's doing it in a whole bunch of different ways, which is fantastic. Like an intuitive intuitive technology really is becoming a thing. Um, like even this app, like this with some of the AI filters and things like that. I'm like, okay, intuitive technology. And then also like, you know, you can scroll through and your guides can manipulate it really easily and, and those sorts of things. And then of course there's additional like specific technology for looking for ghosts or looking for, you know, different energy fields or looking at auras or looking at images in the blood, whatever, whatever the thing is that they're doing spiritually there. But it is important to remember that, like, just because you can now perceive them easier and you're getting validation, they already knew what was going on. And you're now just, kept, you're a step behind them, the being that's on the other side of the technology. Mm -hmm. um, so if anything, you're the one there that needs to be like, oh, cool. Like, thank you for letting me perceive you. Yes. <laughs> thank you for like giving me space to catch up. And I'm so yeah. grateful to TikTok has been phenomenal with meeting people who do have these kinds of ethics. Um, I, I've met people who are both medium psychics and paranormal investigators, and they know how to balance, which is truly a skill set. I'm trying to get better at it because to be able mm -hmm. to go into science brain and then flip into theta and do like mediumship brain, it is an art <laughs> to be mm -hmm. able to do that. But I'm meeting so many more people who have been doing that on their own and now are on a platform where like those lines can cross and we can learn from one another and we can grow faster and faster and faster. Um, but yeah, yeah, just so long as we recognize we're, we're talking to folks and we can be decent to them so long as they're not hurting mm -hmm. us, you know, and most of the time right. they're not. Mm -hmm. No, I fully, fully agree. Fully agree on that. Cause it, yeah, it's just the be kind thing. The other thing I want to say, too, is you, if you ever are a reader or you're tuning into something, you can always ask if the people that you're reading for, you know, want that. Set, you know, like, if you're like, hey, I'm getting a message, but it's really emotionally charged. Are you prepared to receive a message that's really emotionally charged, even if you're in a reading setting? Um, or, you know, if you're talking to ghosts and the ghost says something, you can always be like, oh, OK, well, I don't feel like sharing that because that triggers me a little bit. I don't have to do that. Like, you're not at the whims of spirit spirit can work with you and for you and you can also still have your own boundaries there and a little bit on that note as well is you can always set out boundaries before you tune in for someone regardless on whatever level you're tuning in for if you're tuning in to talk to a ghost if you're tuning in to communicate with some of the spirit guides if you're tuning in to do an energy healing whatever set out your boundaries at beforehand <laughs> like truly beforehand before you even tune in and be like hey this is how i work this is what i flow these are the types of things i will probably be saying to you in some capacity does that make sense? Um, and then you can always reassess for consent throughout the entire process. But that's just an important thing to note, too, is like your boundaries do matter just as much as the other boundaries of the spirit or the guides or you're the person you're reading for. Or you name it. It's like a mutual win win mm -hmm. energy energy. Yeah, um, I'll give an example to that. Uh, one of the hard boundaries I have is I, I don't want to know when somebody's mortality is up. Um, Same. Yeah. It, Very it, rarely do I get that message. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want to know. And I, I want to know all kinds of stuff. But there's something about that that bothers me. One, it's the expectation on being right. It's just far. It, it boggles my brain, which I could. But, uh, mm -hmm. I have like this psychic. I'll say like a psychic block up on that when I'm meeting with people with consultations, because I felt it before when people are like, hey, get, you know, like or something like that, where I straight up shoot it back because I'm like, no, mm -hmm. we're not we're not passing that information. I'm not asking for it. Um, the future is mutable. It can change. Yeah. So absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will also say, too, people will tend to get that's that's a big boundary for me also, because it's also like an unhealthy attachment 
to like, oh, now I'm going to act completely differently because of this one thing and, you know, switch it up. And it's just a meddling that's like not necessary. Because again, like you said, the future is mutable. Also, this, I highly recommend anyone who's diving into your psychic abilities, please remember like blind trust is not required of any of this. Like, if you're tuning in to read, you can be like, hey, this is this is what I'm getting. Like, this is stuff. Ask your own guides for validation. You can ask, do that. Or if you're getting stuff for yourself, be like, okay, I think that was a ping. Guides, can you validate this for me? So that you can get that validation that way. But you don't need to, like, blindly just, like, whoosh, like, mm-hmm. rush mm-hmm. into something in that kind of way. You can actually ask for that validation. So just on the, on the note of, like, the way you said, you know, that pressure to be right about it, like everything you're going to give to someone will be right in some way. But those things that have such a hard and fast thing that creates such an intense attachment doesn't really mesh well with that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, similarly to what we talked about earlier, you wouldn't blindly trust somebody in your beliefs, or at least, I mean, I don't want to say like, well, you shouldn't, but then I'm also like, well, that's somebody else's journey. I wouldn't want to trust mm-hmm. somebody blindly because of what they believed in, nor should right. I trust spirit, you know, um, even mm-hmm. our guides, it, it's a working relationship. It, it's not always mm-hmm. to just be a jerk, but it's just sort of like, dude, this is big. Like, can you do something? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it takes some of the pressure off of you because truly we're down here having taken amnesia pills and being translators and stuff like that. That's what we're doing. I mean, everything up there, the like magical, omnipotent, omnipresent beings that are about, like they have way more information than we do, but they also tend to think we're way more capable than we think we are. So they'll be like, oh, it's totally good. I sent you a message. And you're like, did you? What message did you send me? And they're like, yeah, I sent you a feather. And you're like, the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> why did you send me that and so if they don't know that you don't actually understand that message half the time they're like oh sorry i thought you would understand like i know you in your higher self form so of course i think you'd be capable of understanding that thing and so it's a lot of like you being like i don't actually understand what three pennies mean but i appreciate the gesture could we try it in a more concrete way please mm-hmm. um and again that's it, that building of a relationship mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. so validation can come in a lot of forms from that space Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I okay. I just something just popped up in my mind. I'm like, I'm gonna have to deconstruct oh. that not on a live. Uh, okay. so, that's fair. <laughs> potential sign from somebody that I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> it may be trash. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, so oh. like literal trash. Fun, like actual garbage. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, life is fun and exciting and wild and uh here we are so <laughs> right it's funny the last week i had a new guide pop in mm. and i'm not like talking to them a whole bunch or about them a whole bunch because for the most part they have just standed next to me just like stood next to me and like looked down at me for like a week <laughs> and i'm like what are you doing here what's your deal like what are what are we doing what's the the whole time just so they came through a little bit in the card reading but i'm waiting for that to develop so just for everyone here just to get like the the cute it's all weird like been able to talk to things forever like for a long long time and still i'm just getting stared at even presently just staring at me (laughs) perfect you know that that's funny because um goodness this sometime after july but before now uh time why i'm you know timey wimey but uh yeah i have somebody who may become a guide he's cool um but uh there were, it's like kind of the conversation sort of faded at one point and i was like can i draw you and he was like yeah and so i drew him out he's another worldly kind of being and i was just like cool and then i showed it to him he's like that's good. I was like, I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> and then he's just kind of like there. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> I think it's like a preparatory thing for a lot of people right now. I think it's like a lot of us have turned the page to get to this next chapter, but we ha- we're we still on like the chapter title page. You know what I mean? So we don't actually know what the chapter is going to be. So with that chapter title page, a lot of people's guides who like signed up to be a part of this chapter are like popping to the surface. Like, hey, hey, it's my turn. But we're still on the chapter title page. So they're like, oh, no, no, no. When you turn it, you'll figure it out. And it's like, 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. And this is, I mean, this has been a trend in readings for the last couple months. It's been obviously my own life as of last Thursday. It's been doing this. Like, it's been a trend of like, well, you have a new guide coming in. They're not saying anything yet, but they want you to know they're there. Like, they're around. They're sending you blue lilies. Like, I don't know. That's it. <laughs> I, um, Oh my goodness. This this is something that happened in a recent consult. Uh just because guides are very busy right now and I keep telling people, hey, if they're not around as much, it's not because they hate you. It's because they're no. doing a lot of stuff. And we're supposed to be mm -hmm. learning more on our own and learning how to swim at this point, you know. Um, if you're open to it already, I, I would say. But um th this one person I was meeting with, and basically the guides were tuned in, though they weren't there. And I was just like, okay. And I kind of tuned in. They were both in two different places, the the two main ones that wanted to speak. Both essentially in meetings. The, my brain was like, you'll understand this is a meeting. Now what exactly it was. <sighs> but um, mm -hmm. there was this one bit of advice that one was trying to send me. And it was, energetically speaking, like if somebody were in a meeting with a bunch of people at a table and they had their, t their phone out and they were texting underneath the table. And so like part of the message, I was waiting for like the three dots to go away. Like it wasn't long, but I was just sort of like, okay, they're sending me the energy. Um, <laughs> It'll get through. there. It'll yeah, get there. Like, I'm starting to get a little picture. It's like, uh, it's like being illuminated in my mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Yep. And then it, then it came and I was like, great, it's sent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting too. It's also, I think during from July to now, people were really mm -hmm. focusing a lot more on like 3D earth life stuff that was going mm -hmm. on, like physical mm -hmm. things, which your guides are not going to be as intense with you during that time, most of the time, because they're usually like, Ooh, we're going to let you do that because backing off, we're going to, we don't want to add more chaos to your plate. Because having interactions with people, if that's starting to overwhelm you, having your guides cut in too is going to be two times as overwhelming. And that's not fun. So they will sometimes back off and be like, okay, you do with the people thing. Okay, you're better. Okay, cool. We'll like squishy into the space again. And that's totally, that's completely normal. And if anything, validating that they care enough about you to notice. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um I, you know, and it works both ways too. Like there are some days where I'm dealing with, you know, whatever, dealing with things in the physical. Yeah. And if I get pings from even, even some of my guides, I've, I've gotten pings from before and I've been like, Hey, thanks. Um, but you know, I'm going through something today. So uh, yeah. unless you have something, I don't know, that can help with that. Could we like, could I just watch movies for like a yeah. little while and tune out? <laughs> mm-hmm. Or even sometimes I'm like, I still, I will still to this day be like, I know better than you. So like if the the one prime example that if this was like two years ago, but it's such an example that is so tangible. I was at the store and one of my guides like, you need to buy a hairbrush. And I was like, I will, I definitely don't. I definitely don't need to buy a hairbrush. I have a hairbrush. I don't need a hairbrush. And she was like, mm, I think you do though. And I'm like, but mm, I think you're wrong. And I think time is weird for you. So I'm fine. I already have one. And then again, went through the rest of the store, went back up to the cash register. Are you sure you don't want to buy a hairbrush? I'm like, I'm really fucking positive. And then I get home and I go to brush my hair and my hairbrush breaks in half. And I was like, this, this was a dick move. <laughs> you could have told me the whole story and she got a kick out of it. But again, not life or death, but I'll still be like, mm, no, I'm not doing that. Like you can give me that ping, but I'm just, I don't want to. <laughs> like, and, you know, I think that's going to, we're going to go full circle with this because that's choice. You know, mm -hmm. like we have exactly. choice. That's the ethics within ourselves. No, it's not a real, it's a circle. I just did, wow. I don't know what I just did. That was not a circle, but <laughs> circle. <laughs> it's like the Disney logo where it's like, you're watching oh, yeah. the Disney channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, this has been fun as always. Um, so I think fun. we got at least two new topics for whenever we're going to go live next. So. <laughs> it happens all the time. Honestly, I love going live with you. I appreciate you having you as like a sounding board and I always feel like we get to new spaces. So like, I adore you. Thank you for being here. Um, also, I do just want to say, again, we'll put these on our YouTubes so you guys can check those out if you missed it because we did talk about a lot of stuff that now I don't even fully remember because that's how that works. Um. 
I'll remember it when I make the timestamps later tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> uh -huh. Right? Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I'll get it up there. It'll be fine. <laughs> But um, yeah, I did see some comments and thanks everybody for leaving those comments. Thank you to my mods who are like on top of it, answering questions. Um, for those who, those of you who are still discovering your spirit guides, discovering your um, spiritual abilities, both of us have YouTubes, definitely check them out. There's mm -hmm. so much information on there. Um, you go over a lot of spirit guide stuff. I go over a lot of general stuff, but I definitely, whenever I can, I love talking about ghosts because that's, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, that's 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 your jam, and I appreciate that. I'm doing a lot of guide stuff and channeled history stuff over on mine right now, mm -hmm. because that is what it is. I, mean, I just did a fairy video, so there's mm -hmm. that too. <laughs> just different yeah. random beings, whatever it yeah. strikes you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, thanks everybody for joining and thanks for joining. I appreciate you and um, oh, I I hope everybody has a great full moon. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Full moon tomorrow. Please drink water. Please drink water. Please drink as much water as you can tomorrow. Um, that's like my biggest recommendation for this full moon because it is it's going to feel weird. It just is. And if you're more hydrated, then you're going to flow with it a lot easier Then you're going to be shoved by it. So like water. <laughs> There's my plug for the moon. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be fun. It's a very adventure. Sorry if you work in customer service. I deeply apologize <laughs> in advance for you. Yeah. Clear ground and shield, babies. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Well, everybody have a good night. <laughs> Bye. See ya.